Hello, my Wealthy Wife tribe and friends. This is Miss Sophia here at Wealthy Wife. How are you doing? I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. I did. I truly, truly did. I had a chance Saturday to spend time working on the outline for a brand new program that's coming out, new course, in reference to the topic I've been sharing with you guys about the female-led relationships, which I will be discussing today because that actually means a multitude of things. It's not just what some people think it might be. So I'm going to be just having a deeper discussion in reference to what it means and give you some examples with some of the women that we actually, you know, know about in past and present. And then on Sunday, I had a chance to spend the day with some goddaughters because, as I mentioned, if you're part of the Elegant Muse VIP monthly membership, every first Sunday of the month, we have a call. And it's strictly for the VIP members. And it's a Sunday afternoon tea with Miss Sophia. And I always wanted to be enjoyable because the conversations and it literally just catching up gives me a chance to catch up with them. I do a little teaching, answer questions, and you know, they share scenarios with me. There's comments and information shared amongst them with each other and myself. It winds up being a really great call. And I love it because right now we have a mix of brand new goddaughters coming in as well as my established goddaughters. And I love watching where they start and then over the course of months. And sometimes years, because here's a kicker, I can I can only propel you as far as you allow yourself to go. That's the one thing. But here's the beautiful thing about it is once women learn how to let go of their self-imposed limitations and stop trying to carry old backstories which no longer serve them, they excel. And I had one of my goddaughters on Sunday's call that actually gave an example of where she is now because she is now moving in the space of riches and wealth. And she and she was like, how does she she explained it so beautifully because she had a chance to meet these really amazing wealthy men because of some of the networking and socializing she has been with has put her in front of some really interesting individuals and some very caring people. And she was invited to a party by a friend of hers. And he had at this particular party people that actually had supported him. And his business, and he's an artist, just so you know. So is she. And she was saying, Miss Sophia, she goes, I she goes, it's just so interesting how different these men are. I was like, I know. And she explained how she noticed how they how they communicate, how they always are moving and it, you know, looking for more opportunities to continue to become bigger, better, and more. And it's not just about the money. She realized that it's not just about them making more money, it's just that their minds, how they're how they function and think, they're about expansion. And she goes, and how they how they have discussions together, like, oh, you know, you know, Joe, I hear you're working on a Toby A B C D project, and you know, I haven't talked about, you know, whatever. They're connecting and sharing information and how to help each other out. Because here's something that I've shared before in different audios, this is probably years ago. When men reach a certain level of success, and we're talking the space of riches and wealth, they're no longer competing with each, with each other because they understand the value of, of collaboration. You're only going to run across dog-eat-dog -dog competition with men that are still up and coming and still insecure because they, haven't under, they don't know the value of co-creating with men that at the time may be of equal business status as them. And even if they're not of equal business status of them, in the beginning... Because maybe they're more advanced than that man is, and that man is up and coming. There is a point where they finally do reach what would be called equal business status. They're no longer competing. They are assisting each other. And she saw that. So I thought that was great because, she, you know, she, this is the first time she's really been in those spaces where she could actually pay attention and network. See and be seen. And I was having this discussion with one of my sisters because I said, you know, I'm so happy for my goddaughter because she's in. Because I was talking to her, I said, my, my, uh, my sister, I go, and once again, this is for all of you to remember too. So I say, don't burn your leads. If you're meeting people, don't mess it up because you will sometimes never get a ch another chance. And if somebody likes you, because like this, like I said, this this friend of hers, she's made this associate, this friendship over the course of, I don't know, months, potentially years of her socializing, networking, getting out in her community, doing different things, meeting people. This man invited her to this private party with people that mattered to him. 
you do not get invitations to these kind of private parties if a person thinks that you're going to be a liability to them. He views her as an asset, meaning she is somebody he enjoys. He's somebody that, she, that he trusts. He's somebody that, you know, he felt good um, putting her in front of these individuals because he knows that these individuals might have the capacity also to assist her because she's an up and coming artist. Are you listening to what I just said? Because once again, a lot of folks out there be thinking that um, I love my English someday. I, my mother, my mother, my mother could hear me speak. She'd probably smack me uh, because my English has become a little lax over the years. But it is what it is. <sighs> Pay attention to what I just said. She, he brought her, invited her to a private party where he had some of the closest people that matter to him in reference to his friendships, his association, his patrons. You do not get invited to those kind of parties unless somebody honest and truly understands that you, one, are someone that's not going to embarrass them, that's for sure. Two, someone that they like. They sincerely like, and now they want to offer you an opportunity to be exposed to people and potential resources that will be able to assist you too. I'm so happy for her. I am. I love when these things happen to my goddaughters. But this has been through cultivation, conversations, because she and I have been working together for a while. She was a private client of mine. Um... She's someone who also stays active inside the academy. She's in various courses inside the academy right now. She's part of my monthly the monthly membership. Because when she has questions, she comes. She asks the questions. What do you think about this? What should I do here? I've noticed this. Education is very important, especially in the space when you want to move to a world of riches and wealth. It's different, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm very happy for her. So that popped up. Yesterday, so I'm glad. Like I said, that some of the newer goddaughters have chances to hear it, because once again, you don't know where your journey is going to take you until you understand the journey that you desire to be on. So that was fun. Now, so I would love to be able to have the same kind of you know story to share about the rest of you if you're really ready to do this and you know propel yourself forward into the world of you know affluent, rich, and wealthy romance and living and experiences and who knows benefit your business as well. And here's a kicker. Some of you may already be in this space because I know some of you listening to me are successful businesswomen, are successful women, but you may not be receiving the kind of results that you desire in reference to assistance from men. And when I say assistance from men, it's not just on the romantic side. It can be. But I'm talking about the friendships and also learning how to utilize maybe the resources you already have. Because I say this again, some women, because I've watched this once again, being in the circles that I'm in, Women that are coming in and they're still not understanding the magic of being a woman. They're not understanding the power that you have as a woman that doesn't require you to act like a man. I was laughing because there's this gentleman, Um, I discovered him, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks ago. And he is a coach. He has a whole business. I won't tell you he's a coach. Well, I guess he is a coach. He has a coaching business. And his main audience are men and his thing is like warrior you know warrior this warrior warrior war war, war, which i love i I love i love those kind of programs for men because men need them they need something that's going to really fuel their testosterone again well this gentleman now wants to work with women and i'm like and their women are going to work with him because they haven't quite found their voice yet ladies That kind of man really can't work with us because he's going to teach that push, push. He's going to be for that, that rough and tumble and grr, grr, grr kind of energy because that's who he is. And as a woman, and even if you're working in a masculine and, you know, male dominated field, you still want to avoid now that chest bumping with men because it's going to do you in. This is where women burn out. This is where women get used in the business world because they're not tapping into that feminine wisdom. You're not tapping into our truth that we function different than men do. And when you understand that and men see that you understand your power and they understand that you understand and and you have a deeper knowing of your, but makes you wise. 
without having to try to bump chest with them, they're not going to look to take advantage of you. They're going to be looking for ways to pour into you because they're going to want to also understand how to bring you into their world as an asset, as somebody that actually can tap into those higher realms, that higher energy. Once again, and they'll pour into you because to pour into you automatically means your cup is going to overflow, your pitcher overflows and pours onto them, which will automatically elevate them as well. Just saying, ladies. So some of you out here, like I said, are doing great in the business world, but you've burned yourselves out because you've been doing it from a space of trying to act like a man because that's what you've been taught. And then you're going to try to totally swing the pendulum down to be in this damsel in distress. Doesn't work that way, ladies. Doesn't work that way. No, 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 no. Because one is going to feel uncomfortable to you because you know it's not your truth. You're not a damsel in distress. You're a powerful woman. You're an intelligent woman. You have things that you are accomplishing and have accomplished. And you have no desire to, to make yourself small and diminish your power, your strength. This is where the female relationships come into play. But once again, it's not just about you have to be the front runner because a female relationship. You ever heard about that saying called, hang on a second. Two key sayings, and they're old sayings. The power behind the throne, or my favorite one, because my mother's family comes from down south, iron fist and a velvet glove. Now, these are women that are very much the leaders in their households. Their husbands come to them for guidance. Their husbands come to them for to counsel, to sit down and have discussions with before they make major decisions because they understand the power and the wisdom and the knowledge that their wife has or the woman has because she is somebody who's tapped into her feminine truth her divine wisdom which i'm gonna do a whole audio and i'm gonna post it on patreon about wisdom because i was listening to some really great audios videos i'm sorry this past weekend that a gentleman really explained who wisdom in in reference to the holy spirit once again i follow an organized religion but there are so many things you guys have been told that have been lies and while he did a great, great job of explaining it, he did. There are still some things even he didn't get correctly because of the framework of what he's been raised with. But once again, Patreon, audio, sometime this week. But anyway, so we talk about that female-led relationship. Once again, it's not always about you being like the queen with the consort. It can be because some of you have said before, you are the queen and you would be, you're the one who created the kingdom. You're the one who's building up the nation, so to speak. And you would do very good. Your right pairing, your right partner would be the consort. And I gave the example of Queen Elizabeth and her husband, you know, Prince Philip. He was a prince consort. He was not, he was never given the label of a king. He was, because the kingdom, the nation, the commonwealth, whatever, everything that came with, you know, that British empire, so to speak, was hers. Now, he came from a noble background as well. He's, he was a prince. You know, he came from a background as well, but she was the bigger of the two, okay? So he was her counsel. He was her companion. He was so many things to her. And I'm going to talk about that because I have a course. I guess I'm working on the outline for the course right now and discusses the queen and her consort and how the two, you know, how, how to actually seek the right person, the right fit for you. But then I think in terms of once again, female relationships where the front person is the man. Now, for those of you who want to get all biblical, and I still get makes me laugh, but talk about that holding the man's the head and the woman is the neck. And then people forget that because they think that means the woman is the lower of the two. I'm like, no, 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 no. Because I'll say it again. If you have a stiff neck, how try to turn your head. Go ahead. Try to try to turn your head left. Try to turn your head right. Du you can't. You can't. If it is, it's so painful. If you attempt it, you can do a little bit, but you have you to turn your whole body. <laughs> Been there, done that. I've had a stiff neck before. Been there, done that. You've had a stiff neck before. Been there, done that. Right? You know the head ain't, is not doing much if the neck isn't flowing and helping. Okay. So you sometimes you guys got to pay attention. Because I know some of you get all led astray by all these crazy masculine concepts. I'm like going, okay. And I get it. I get it. It was. It's, it's been a wonderful, diabolical propaganda and madness to put women in their 
quote unquote place. Thing is this, we are finally waking up because there's a transition taking place back into a space where we're more about building community and really, really creating these environments where we all can thrive. And that requires us to be back in our truth as women and understand what wisdom actually means. Because that is knowledge, that is information, that is understanding, it's counsel, it's strength, it's so many different things. And I mentioned before, when it came to how things were done in days gone by, because remember, most of the stories that you guys are being told inside of your religious doctrines, documents, have been altered horribly. They have been twisted. They have been turned inside out. They are basically being written by people that will, is based upon what they want you to know. Because I said before, just even in the Christian faith, read the various Bibles from the different categories of Christianity. They're not the same. And then you want to add the Roman Catholic Bible to it. It's not the same. So you've got this information that technically sounds the same, but it has been rewritten to accommodate the particular desires and doctrines or, or, or protocols of these different faiths. So when you remember this, you can now once again step back and go, okay, let me really sit down and do some research because I do tons of research. There's information which can be very beneficial and useful, absolutely. But some of it you need to take with a grain of salt because it's not the truth. It has been turned inside out. But once again, different audio, different day. So when I think in terms of the other version of a female relationship, the power behind the throne, once again, this is that neck they talk about. She is the one, the husband, once again, he is the forefronter. He is the one out there and she has decided to tie her um, to tie her energy into his vision. Now, a wise woman will have taken the time out to really hear and listen to and pay attention to what a man is saying. You have a man who desires to be a husband. Once again, as before, we discussed this. You want to be a woman, want to be a wife. So, and I figured out right now, it's not so much they want to be a wife initially. They want to be a bride. They really just want to wear the big, pretty dress. They want the party. They want all the attention that's so focused on them. So it's not that some women want to be a wife. Some of them just already, they want to be a bride. Which is a mess because then they realize that, oh, crap, you're, you're still here. It's like, yeah, you got married, honey. The marriage, the wedding was just the beginning. There's a whole relationship that goes along with the wedding. But anyway, for those of you that do desire to be wives, for real, with a man who desires to be a husband, you should be sitting down and hearing what he has to say in reference to his vision. And he shouldn't just have a vision. He should already be working on the vision and putting things into place and doing things that are literally bringing forward his vision. This is why some men, once again, I said some truly great men are off of your radar because they're working on building out their vision because they're seeking that true wife. That woman who will be the power behind the throne. The one who actually can come to and counsel and have conversations with. I'm going to give the example of Meghan Markle and, and, Meghan Markle and uh, Prince Harry. Harry is far from... Harry was the wild child, obviously, in that royal family. He was the wild child. But he was the... But even so, in, in him being wild and crazy and doing things, he still was very much tapped into and building, you know, building out his life. He had his role to play within, you know, the corporation called the royal family. Uh, he was very much into doing the things that he needed to do to be part of that corporation, to make sure that he played his part properly and he was still adding value to the family business. So when it came time for him to finally get married, there, Harry was not stupid. Had Harry been married, well, not married, been engaged prior to with women that were once again, basically from his social group, et cetera, et cetera, had all the proper pedigree, all the proper whatever they needed to have. But an issue with so many of the women that he dated was the fact that they could not handle the attention that came from being with him. Paparazzi, the this or that, they couldn't handle it. One of the perks to Meghan Markle was the fact that she could. She's an actress. She has spent time doing the paparazzi. She has understands, you know, the press. She, there are so many things she understood initially, just in general life. Now, there's a whole other pro protocol, whole other process that goes with being part of a royal family that she had no clue about. Remember, they gave her a crash course, a six-month crash course in a duchess training. And it was a crash course. And even then, because not enough, because 
all of them, William, Harry, were raised with those protocols. So six months is nowhere near enough time to learn how to stand in the position of a royal. But she did her best. But anyway, when he and 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 Megan also had another leg up on these other women was the fact that she also was already involved in film and philanthropic endeavors. She had her own thing that she was doing. So she had a social media presence. She understood how to deal with paparazzi. She understood how she understood how to be on a stage. She understood how to speak. She's an actress. Okay, so she can know how to play a role. And on top of that, she's is a sincere she sincerely cares about Harry. And I'm gonna say this again. Megan had training. Megan had coaching. Because you do not go from where she was, because remember she was married because she was also a divorce say, which you know people are like, oh my gosh, she was married before. Oh, it doesn't matter. You do not go from who she was married to the first time to a Prince Harry without coaching. She had private tutoring, okay? You don't do that. You don't make that, that you, mm -mm. there's things you gotta learn about yourself. There are some ways you gotta learn how to, how to conduct yourself. Things you got the whole programming and strategy that goes into that. So she had help. But she is the power behind what I would say would be the throne, not the royal, not, not the, you know, the English throne, but Harry. She's the power behind their home, their personal throne. Because Harry with, and this I know this irks the people in, in, in the UK because, you know, they're like, oh, oh my God, you know, she came in there and just destroyed the royal family. She didn't. She didn't. She just simply was gave Harry the power to finally make the decision he wanted to make around his life. He wanted out of that. He went out of that situation for so long because he was unhappy. He was unhappy. He's not going to inherit the throne ever because, you know, his brother has, there are three individuals between him and that throne and something happens to his brother. So Harry's never going to inherit the throne. So for the most part, you know, he's just doing a J-O-B. And I'm sure he came to position at a point where there's just things he desires to do independent of. Because that happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you are dealing with trust fund family, so to speak, because Harry is a trust fund baby. And there are some trust fund babies that don't just want to be part of the trust fund. They want to create their own world. They have a desire to create their own legacy. So Megan is the velvet glove covering the iron fist. She is somebody that Harry can sit down and counsel with. She is somebody that will sit down and offer him wise counsel. Because she's taking the time out to learn. Megan Markle is no fool. She's an actress. She understands how to study. She understands the importance of research. She's also very determined. She has had a vision for her life from the sounds of it all her life. So when I say female-led relationships, once again, it's not always just the fact that you are the front runner for the relationship, but it's that you understand how to be present with men in a way that they can sit with you and feel good in your in your counsel. They can feel good sh being sharing information with you and finding wisdom and guidance and assistance in what you have to say. And if you're going to be the front runner with the consort, you understand also how to communicate to him how to be his best version of him for you. That's what I'm excited about this course that I'm working on because it really does break it down. How to do it. There's going to be probably two separate courses, but the one in particular will be first with the female led, where the woman is the queen, so to speak, with the consort. But those those qualities that will be taught in that particular this, this course will also benefit those of you that may decide once again to be behind the scenes. Because you're going to understand what it means to be a great consort, how to support your person, how to develop these great communication skills. Because communication skills are everything. Because you need to understand, once again, what is the purpose? Why have the two of you come together for this relationship? And this is what separates the average person from the rich and the wealthy. Now, it could be somebody who's going to be up and coming into the space of rich and wealthy, but this is what separates the two. And I've said this so many times over the years. The rich and wealthy, and that could also be somebody who's up and coming, moving into that space. They have a vision and a plan. They already know they're, 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 they're elevating. They already know they're seeking higher 
forms of, of resources. They're seeking um, greater um, prominence on the world stage, so to speak, meaning they're philanthropic endeavors, meaning whatever it is they envision for a better world on a small scale or on a global scale. So when they think in terms of partnerships and they think in terms of long-term relationships, once again, they're not looking just to marry anybody because they're cute. No, they're literally looking, they're literally looking at individuals going, okay, how are they going to fit in my vision and my plan? This is the woman as well as the man. Like I said before, Megan had a plan. Megan understood she understood how to get herself in front of people and associate with people that ran in a certain energy that ran in a certain space so that when the time came and the individual who would wind up introducing her to harry the woman already knew that mindset mentality energy this megan would be a good fit for harry because this woman knew harry she knew his headspace she had I'm sure had, had developed a friendship with him she understood that hey this might not be a bad idea okay proximity 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 meaning location 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 Know what you're doing and your why's. I discuss this with you guys all the time. And then in this case of, let's say, for a queen consort, let's say, for example, you are, you're the front runner. You're the one building out the kingdom, so to speak. This is your quote unquote nation you're building. And you're bringing a gentleman in to be in that space with you. You have to have conversations with him. You need to also review what he's doing. What is his headspace? What are his thought process? Why does he desire to be here with you and grow with you? How do you communicate? Because where some women are running into problems with the men they're getting involved with and they're going astray where the man is just, just, it's just a bad fit all around because she wasn't paying attention. She wasn't listening. There are all kinds of cues, ladies. If you're a powerful woman in your own right and you keep running into situations with these men that are just a disaster for you, you're not paying attention you are letting hormones run you you are letting desperation run you potentially you're letting a biological clock run you potentially you're letting loneliness run you something outside of your wisdom is causing you to default into oh i just need a man no you need a partner you need someone who actually really 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 understands your vision and your dream and is happy to support you in your vision and your dream. And he understands the position he can play, how he may assist you. Those things you must articulate, but you have to understand them for yourself first. So once again, looking forward to this course because it really is going to break some things down that I haven't really seen broken down before. In reference to how to really have these relationships and have them, and have them thrive. Because I'll say it again, rich and wealthy, they plan. They don't just, well, there's, there's nothing willy-nilly about these relationships. I know you think in terms of what was it, Sophia Richie, when she married her husband, I can't think of his name right now. And they're like, oh, you know, she married him because, you know, she began to dress better. She was she was dressing like old money. No, she wasn't. Ladies, I tell you guys, some of the stuff you guys, I'm not saying any of you guys, any of you directly, but some of the stuff I see out there just has me going, oh, are you joking? But once again, the average person just won't know. They just don't know. And I get that. Sophia Richie, once again, knew her husband. They had been friends for years. Their fathers knew each other because Lionel Richie works with, I, heard him, I think his name is Elliot. They, 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 they've, they've been collabing and doing things together for decades. They've known each other for forever and a day. Sophie, Sophia Richie has known, knew her husband for years. They're friends. They come from common, they have common backgrounds. They have, she can understand what Elliot is doing in his vision and his plan to create the way he creates. She knew the man that she married. There was not, she just all of a sudden stopped dressing like, you know, the average, I don't know, chick in where she comes from. And now, you know, she's dressing more elegant and more refined. That is not what got her her husband, ladies. Okay. She knew her husband. They had conversations. She understood his vision and his plan. He was already working his vision and his plan. 
And because she grew up in the industry that Elliot also grew up in, they can build together. I think they just had a child. I'm like, if she's either pregnant or they just had a baby. I need to look that up. But anyway, commonalities, shared vision, understanding, wise counsel. He knew that with Sophia, he can become bigger, better, and more. Because one, she's an asset in his world. She gets what he does. So he's not going to have to come home and fuss and fight by the fact that there's some days she may not see him for days on end because he's in the studio working. I need you to pay attention to me. I miss you. That's wonderful. She's not going to do that to him. Oh, I need you to be here to help take care of this baby. She's not going to do that to him. Because if he's working on the project, she's going to get it. Because when he does come out for air periodically, he's going to be happy to share with her what's going on. And she's going to go and bathe this awesome. Now get back in there. Knock it out. And they will have conversations. They are building a legacy. And he's building one independent of his father's legacy. So I'll say this again. There are many moving parts to this. This is why it's important you understand who you are. And then you're very honest about what you desire. So do you desire to be the power behind the throne? Meaning your man, your husband, or your long-term partner values what you have to say to him. He values your wisdom. He values your understanding. He values your knowledge. It means he's willing to sit down and listen, not because you're nagging the life out of him, not because you're harassing him, but because you literally are, you listen, you hear him, you pay attention, you do your research, you come into your process with wisdom because you understand you. A man will happily sit and listen to you share, and he goes, okay, they'll ask, what do you think about this? I've been working on ABC, and you know what? I know you're really great at this, or you don't, or, or maybe you're not great at it, but you know what? I just would love to just bounce these ideas off of you. Can we talk? And you're like, of course. What's on your mind? And guess what happens? The time, time comes when you now have something that you desire to do, he's all ears. He's willing to listen. He's willing to assist. Because he already knows. He has found. What's that thing about the Bible? He who finds a, finds a wife, finds a good thing. Ladies, they're talking about wisdom. They're talking about wisdom. They're talking about a wise woman. Not just any woman. A wise woman. One who understands who she is. In the power of being divinely tapped in to divine wisdom. Feminine, feminine wisdom. Divinely tapped into feminine, feminine wisdom. Yes. And once again, if you're that one who has, who is the kingdom builder, you understand, once again, how to select your prince consort. And you're doing it from a space of strength, not desperation. Okay, ladies? So anyway, just wanted to share that because once again, I'm working on the course as we speak. It is really good. I was like, wow. Because... Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready to see more of you actually thrive. I really, really am. Like I said, when I'm listening to the God, my goddaughter, and I'm, I'm gonna leave it off of this, have the share the discussion and her experience with the gentleman that she met this past weekend at this private party, these wealthy men that she met at this private party. I look forward to her next step because once again, her friend invited her to this private party to meet people that he values. And understands that these individuals have the potential also to elevate her. She wasn't there by accident. He, did, you do not bring people into your world with your with your best people, unless you have a desire to also elevate them. So I'm very proud of her. And I'm very happy for her. So if you desire for that to be you too, join us. Like I said, come in, join the membership, or even better yet, when I finally finally put this post the course. Join the course, because I kid you not, it's going to change your life beautifully. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.